So, uh, guys, long time no scene, but my name is Max, and welcome to this video today. We're going to go uh, create a simple tic tac toe game using JavaScript and HTML. So, let's just start by creating a new file called tic toe or something like that, but HTML, and inside of there, just grab some basic HTML, set the title uh, tic tac toe, for now at least. And to make things a little bit different today, why not add the script tag to the head of the file this time? Um, so instead of here, we start by declaring a window on load event or on load function. Um, so we do it like this: we call it main. Inside of here, we will create our canvas, our global canvas later, our context and other stuff, and we will call our our init and the tick function for the first time here. So let's just create our uh, init function and our tick function. Uh, and the tick function, it will just call itself using a window request animation frame uh, for looping here, so it will look like this, and then we we'll call two other function that we call update and render that we will create right here. So we say updates and function render. Like that. So now we have the basic skeleton for our game, but we haven't actually created those global variables that we call canvas and context that we use for drawing and uh, drawing. Uh, so we just specify the global variables right there, and then we say document create element, so we create this canvas and context, but before we do that we set the width and the height, and let's set it to 200 for now at least, and let's get the context um, from canvas to the context, and then let's just append uh, the canvas to the body. So if we open this up in a web browser, so let's see, we, and if we inspect the elements on the page, we could see that the canvas has been added to the page. So that's good. So, but before we move on, uh, let's add some styling to the canvas here. So we can use a style tag like this, and here we can specify different CSS styles for our canvas. So let's add our border maybe. Uh, let's set the position to absolute, uh, the margin to auto, and then uh, the, all of the positions here to zero. So we set the bottom, top, bottom, sorry, zero, left, and uh, right positions to zero like that. And that should center it in the middle of the screen on most of the browsers. So cool. Uh, so what do we do from here? Well. Let's create our simple type class that we use for our uh, re graphical representation of the game here. So you say function type like that, because that's how you, how you specify classes in the JavaScript. And uh, for this one, we'll use a little bit odd syntax, but yeah, it's quite good. I like it sometimes. So we just use these uh, variables here that we have inside of this function. Then we say add methods that will be um, that we can access later using the keys, this uh, keyword. So we will have a update method on the type class, and we'll have a draw method on the on the type class. And the draw method will take a kind of context as a parameter here, and for now uh, it will just draw a, an image that I haven't specified yet. But that will call tile, and it will draw that at the x and y position. So let's specify this tile object. So we say, say set it like this, and set that to the tile blank, and that we haven't created yet. So we say if the tile is null, so if this here isn't initialized yet, then this block of code will be called. And inside of here, we'll we will create this. Uh, blank tile, the north tile and cross tile and all the stuff like that. So to do that we need a 
second um, canvas. So I just call it like this. So it's a document of create element canvas again. And for the width and the height for this one, let's set it to uh, 100. Like that. And um, let's grab the context as well. So we say context, get context to the like that. And uh, for the fill style, we could use HTML, HTML5 colors. So let's set, use sky blue because that looks quite cool. And for now, let's just create the blank tile. Uh, so for doing that, it's real simple. Just do a fill rectangle over the whole of the canvas, like that. And then we say that the tile uh, blank equal to a new image. And then we set the source of that image uh, to the data, uh, data girl of the, the canvas, which is a method that you can get um, uh, the data represented um, as um, yeah, base 64 a string um, which makes you can save like the state of the canvas at a, at a particular moment and uh, uh, that's what we do and we save that uh, to this image uh, object here um, so and we just I want to make sure here so that we actually set the tile here to the blank tile as well because it's null up here then we must make sure that this set the tile equals to this blank tile right there. So that's it for now. So let's see if it works. So let's just create a simple test uh, tile for now. So but I will call that data since, since we'll use that variable later. So let's create that as a global variable. And then I create this data here as a new tile. And for the position, let's set it at 2020. And in the render method, let's just draw it. So say dot data draw and draw it to the context like that and hopefully now you should see a blue screen drawn to the canvas right there so that's cool it's working so let's create our uh, some other tiles here as well so let's create the uh, north tile let's say spell it like that so we just for consistency you can just build the whole thing again even though it isn't necessary but anyway and we set tile nodes here to a new image as well. And uh, and let's set the source here in the same way. Uh, so we say to data URL like that. But the magic comes in here where we draw the circle or the north inside of the tile. So we say context.beginPath like that. And then context.stroke, which is two methods that we can use to draw. Uh, polygons to uh, a canvas and then use the arc method to draw a circle. So at first two um, uh, arguments it's the position or the center of the circle or the arc we want to draw so in this case it's the middle of the tiles so of 50-50. Then uh, the third argument is the radius so for that we use 100 since it's 100 pixels wide um, and we divide it by 2 so 50 and then we want to subtract 20 to pad it 20 from the side of the tile so to speak so this should actually be 30 or something like that so we can do keep it 100 over 2 uh, minus 20 or we could just say 30 like that and then it is between which angles we want to draw the the circle in radians so we want to draw it from this uh, 0 to 2 times mat dot pi which is a third full circle so that should give us the north tile. So let's see if that works. It really didn't really. So string is not function. 79. Let's see here. 79. Uh, oh, uh, fill rect, not fill styles here. So like that. Yes. Yeah, so here you can see that we have the circle drawn to the canvas. But maybe it's a bit uh, too uh, small to see here. So we can add. Uh, can increase the line width, so let's say 4 pixels, which will give it uh, appearance like that. And then we can maybe change the stroke style as well, so it fits a bit better with the theme here. So let's and let's set that to white, maybe. 
yeah, that looks quite good. Uh, so that's it. So let's do the cross as well. So we can just copy this since it's quite similar. So let's copy it down right here. Yeah, let's change this to cross, even though it's pretty obvious that it is the cross here. Um, let's change it like that. And instead of the arc, we want to draw two lines to make up the course. So to do that, we use the move to uh, method and the line to method. So we want to draw two lines. So we call this twice here. So move to and uh, lastly context of line two. And as augments here, of course, it takes the x and y position of where we want to draw it. So let's go from the upper left corner down to the bottom uh, right corner, so 80, 80, that should be if we pad it with 20 again. And then we want to draw it from the upper right corner, so let's say 80, uh, 20, and we want to draw it to the bottom left corner, so that should be 20, uh, 80, like that. Uh, so let's change this to cross here and see if that works. So yeah, we now have the cross to the, in the middle, uh, to the launch canvas. Uh, but I really don't like the line capping here, so we can change that as well with a simple method call here, so or property change, so we can say context of line cap and I like sort of like the round line capping here, so if you um, keep real, real um, observe, uh, yeah, if you observe here now, you can see that we have square line caps but when I reload a page, you see that now it is rounded line caps which is, which is exactly what I want in uh, this particular time here. Yeah, so that's it for all of the different tiles. But let's go back to blank for now, please. Um, yeah, but so uh, basically what I want is to have a cool animation when we like flip the tile. So I will create this new method here that I will flip. And as an uh, augment, that will take uh, which uh, tile it should be. So we say tile equal to the next, like that for now. And then we also want to have this animation variable here that I'll set to zero at the start. But when we flip it, we want to set it to one. And then uh, gradually in the update method, we want to check if the animation is greater than zero. And if it is, we want to subtract, let's say, 0 0.02 from the animation var um, a variable there to, like, um, yeah, to make the animation run here. So, right, for, for now, let's just call the update method of, the, our, of our test tile. So, say, uh, update like that. And... Um, Let's just flip it real quick. So we say that out of flip, and we can say tile dot naught. And as you see right now, we just changed the tile because we haven't really implemented the animation yet. So, but let's do that. So we can start by saying here. So we say if the animation is uh, smaller or equal to zero, then we basically just want to draw the tile normally here. But if it isn't, then we want to check here. So we want to say check if we want to take out the tile here, a particular tile, so let's call it T uh, for shorthand here. And we want to check if the animation is, is greater than 0 0.5. Then we want it to like be uh, the blank tile in the beginning of the animation. So you can think of it like a page flip. So first you don't see the, the back backside of the tile, but then, and then you only see the front which is blank, but then you, sh you flip it gradually and, and up till half in the animation you don't see the tile, but then after that you will see the next tile here, that we specify here, up here. Um, so that should be it, so uh, for now let's just call the uh, context of draw image again, just to see if it works here, so x and y. So right now you can see that it should be blank a bit and then it should be the circle on it. Here yeah, you can see that it blinks like that. But basically what, what, what we want to do is we want to shrink the child in the x direction. And to do that we can 
split up the tile in different columns and draw them separately. So we do that. So we say for var i equals zero, i is less than 100, the width of the tile, and y uh, plus equal a res resolution variable that we haven't created yet. Uh, so let's just do that. So we say var res, let's set that to two. And this here will say so uh, the width of each of the columns we want to draw. Um, and the smaller the columns, the better the effect, but the more processing power it will require. So in order for it to like run well on the mobiles and other stuff like that, then we uh, our resolution value of 2 or 4 is probably good. Anyway, so we say it like this. So then we just say uh, we draw an image again here, and we want to draw the tile, and we use all of the 8 uh, all of the nine, I should say, arguments to the to the draw image method. So basically, the the five first uh, arguments say specify where on the uh, image you want to draw, which image, and where what you want to draw. So now, example for x position, we want to draw it at i, and uh, y position, we want to draw it at zero, and the y, uh, width, we want to draw it at the res uh, resolution width. And the height you want to draw at 100, like that. Then for the, uh, the four, um, 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 yeah, um, methods that uh, augments that come let, uh, is, is, then is where on the, uh, yeah, on the cams you want to draw it. So for example, you want to draw it at x y position, of course. You want to draw it at the width of where. Um, of the resolution for now at least and not forget here so if you can see right now we just see one small column of the canvas drawn like that so we basically want to add the i here so you can see here how it's drawn normally and to shrink it we want to sort of like mm, subtract here with a value so let's say uh, 0 0.2 times i, and that should give us a uh, uh, 0 0.2 width of the of the tile like that. Um, so I just realized here that you should really clear the canvas before we draw anything to it. So this was called clear rectangle here. So 0 0 canvas the width, uh, canvas the height. Yeah, so here you can see that we. And why isn't that clearing? Uh, yeah, that should be cleared. So that's strange. Oh, I forgot to call the return method. <laughs> Man. Yeah. So here you can see how, how we shrink, uh, shrink it in the x direction. But basically, we want to have that dynamically changing here. We don't want to have ceremony 2 all the time. We want to have that dynamically changing uh, with with the value of the animation here. So let's call it p for now and let's, and, uh, let's set it as a function of um, uh, of, of uh, animation. So let's just use a linear interpolation for now. So let's, say, let's use it like this. And that should give us like that. So you can see here how it shrink. Well, basically, we want, to, we want it to shrink first and then expand again. So for doing that, we could use an, uh, an absolute function or a quadratic function, if you will, as well. But anyway, so an absolute function of the variable x looks like this. And you can translate it in the x direction like that. And we can mirror it on the y direction. Um, like that, and to give it, to get it up over the, this again we can uh, just like add one to it. So this is sort of the function we want, but we want it to go from zero to one, and not from zero to two. Here. So we say two times the variable to give us like this. So if we use this for our function uh, right here for the p-value, you can see here that we'll get the effect that we want here. So say uh, 2 times animation uh, minus 1 plus 1 like that. 
and if we go back to the browser and we go to the page, you can see that it first shrinks and then expands again. Uh, and to give it more of a page flipping effect, um, we also want to like translate it in the x direction depending on i here. So for doing that, we can just uh, like add 50 times p as well. And you can see here, now we get this sort of like flipping effect in that direction. But this isn't enough, at least I don't think so. So we could also like change the height dynamically here as well. So let's say if we want to like subtract, um, let's say i times p times uh, 0.2 here maybe. Uh, let's add i times p times 0.4 here, so half, we subtract half here, and we add uh, double, twice the amount there. You can see that we get this sort of page uh, flipping animation like that. But it is flipping, we should want it to like flip straight over, and not back and forth like that. And I haven't really figured out a smart uh, way to do that, but uh, we can just like declare a new variable call it j, like there, and then we can like say if the animation once again is greater than 0 0.5 then we want it to to uh, be i, we can s yeah, or yeah, actually we want to have, have like i right here um, when it is bigger, uh, we want it to be 100 minus i to like invert it and that should give us the full, uh, yeah, and if, if we change this to J here, of course, that should give us the full flipping, like that. Which looks quite cool, in my opinion, at least. And uh, I decided that we should uh, probably have it flip in the other direction. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah. So here we now have the finished flipping. So you can keep it like this. Or if you are, <laughs> uh, if you're really, really picky, you could add. Uh, to have to take 50 minus this stuff. Take it over back over here, and uh, to give it more of like an even animation. So that is what it looks like now. You can see that it's really even, and uh, and the tile looks like it is centered all the time. Or you can keep it the way we had before here, and here you can see that the tile more looks like it's coming uh, forward at you, or something like that. But I will leave it like this, so we have this even flipping animation. Yeah, so that's it for the, for the tile class, almost at least. So, um, let's just draw all of the nine tiles to the canvas. So through that, we go up here to the init method again, and inst instead of just making the data equal to one single tile, we can say here, we can say if uh, data is uh, null, so if it doesn't exist yet, then we want to initialize it to an uh, empty array like this, then we want to loop, so we say var i equals zero, i is less than uh, nine, we want to go on we want to create nine tiles like that. Now we just push new tiles here to the canvas. And um, let's just flip the zero most for now. And we haven't set the x and y position yet, so uh, bear with me, guys. We will do that soon. But first, we will uh, do the update and uh, render methods uh, down here. So, for doing that, we could use this shorthand for loop. So we will declare i here to 9, like that, or the data.length if we want to be really like <laughs> good here, or good conventions. So we can use this for loop to loop through all of the indexes of the data array. Um, and then we'll say uh, the data at index i as updates. And then we do the same thing. Uh, if I just can get my mouse position right, right here, oh, come on, like that, and we change this to draw, 
to the context right there. Um, and for now, yeah, so for the x and y position, it's a bit tricky. So with x position, that will just equal to the i modulus 3, like that. So the, the, the modulus of, so the, uh, one, one second guys. Yeah, sorry for that. Um, so i modulus 3, that will just give us the reminder of this calculation. So let's say uh, i here takes values between 0 and 8. Uh, since we declared a loop the way we did here, so 0 modulus 3, for example, will be equal to 0 because the reminder is 0. But if you have 4 modulus 3, that would give you the reminder of 1 because you can only divide uh, i even, of oh, sorry, 4 even by 3 once, and then you get the reminder of 1. So that's this whole modulus operator. And then we take that and multiply that by 1 on 20 to make the spacing correctly. And then we add 20 to like pad it from the left at the start as well. And then for the y position, we take, we floor our number here. So we take i divided by 3. Uh, this time to like give the right row of where we want to draw it. And the same here with 1 on 20 plus 20. And if we have done this correctly, we do see some more tiles drawn to the canvas, but we can't see them all because the canvas is too small. So let's change the weight there. So we say 3 times 120 uh, plus 20, like that. And that should give us, make uh, us see all of the tiles. So we now have that done. So we will do one more thing in this video as well. So we will make it possible to like click on the on the tiles to make them flip, um, and uh, it will be real simple. Um, uh, we won't change, or we can do that. Okay, yeah, enough talking. <laughs> let's do this. So let's get rid of that method call. So we want to flip that tile, and then we go up here to the main method, and we add an event listener on the canvas. So it's a canvas add event listener and then there like that and we will listen for the mouse down event uh, and we want to call the mouse uh, down method a function that we haven't created yet so add event listener well it looked like it's right spell but yeah we'll see so let's create that function we can create it uh, yeah let's create it down here we say function uh, mouse uh, down and as an augment that is passed to it uh, through this is the yeah uh, is the what do you say the event um, so we can say var l that equal to the event dot target element so that should be the canvas in this case and then we calculate the position uh, the x position and the y position that will just be the client dot x minus the ele element dot uh, I will see here sorry guys uh, one second yeah the offset uh, left for the x position of course and uh, of course we want to uh, call it on the event <laughs> event dot client y so this gave us the x and so the, the client x and y position gave us the mouse coordinates inside of the window relative uh, to this point up here and then we subtract with the offset like the top offset and the left offset to give the translated click position inside of the canvas that's basically what this does. So it's the element dot offset uh, top like that, and let's just log out uh, the positions for now to see if it works here. Uh, yeah, so let's see. 
uh, offset left of the undefined. Uh, one moment, guys. Be right back. Yeah, so I'm so stupid sometimes. Uh, this should of course not be target element, just target um, to give it a red metal here. So you can see here now, when you click here near the top left corner, that will give low coordinates. And when we click down here, we'll get quite high coordinates. And yeah, so like that. So that works at least. So basically, what we want to do now is we want to calculate on which of the squares we click. And to do that, we can uh, uh, use this uh, sort of reminder trick again. So you can say if uh, the position in the x direction, modulus 120, is uh, less than 20. So if we don't want to re uh, register clicks that is within the padding. Uh, and that goes for both X and Y positions, so we say uh, like that. And then to uh, get the index that we want to flip here, we can use this mat of floor like that, and then we do like, and that should give us the X tile we want to click, so in this direction. But then we can add uh, to the index, we can add the floor value, the floor value of the y position as well. And that should give us like a zero if you click here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, when we click on these different fields here. So to prove my point here, we can just console our log uh, the index that we calculated. So let's see here. So here you can see zero, we we'll click on this one, but it should be four. Or Oh, this, that was a bit strange. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, this will of course be times three here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's one, zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And you see here if we click inside within the margins, it shouldn't be registered. So why is that registered? Uh, well, that was a bit strange. Oh, oh. Should be, of course be and <laughs> yeah, uh, so now it isn't registered when we click inside of the paddings. And then basically, what we want to check, you want to check if the data uh, at, at the index, so and we want to check if that is uh, and if it's flipped already. Uh, then we also want to return, or we can say, we can do two methods. So we can say, has that, we haven't created this method yet, but we'll do that soon. But if it isn't, then we want to flip it. So we say index.flip, and we want to flip it like, yeah, let's just flip all with north for now. So let's create this hat data method. So we can do it, uh, yeah, let's do it up here. So we say this.has data function um, we'll take an arguments and that will just return uh, if the tile uh, is not equals to the uh, tile not blank yeah and let's use double equal signs there for that so hope now when we click on a tile you can see that it's flipped and if we clicked on tile we have clicked on previously you see that it isn't uh, that it is staying the way it was so that's cool um, so I will do one thing and then in the second video we'll implement an AI system and some other fixes and stuff like that but for now we'll just make this a game two player and uh, with, with the hard reset button here, when we reset by clicking on the reload button. So to do that, we just create this uh, active, or we can actually call it, can do it up here. Uh, and we, let's call it player. And in the init method, let's initialize the player to the uh, north player. And then when we when we are flipped here, we flipped not to the flip to the player like that, and then we set the player 
equals to uh, set players equals to the tile naught. Then we want to flip it, change it to tile cross. Also, we want to flip, change it to tile naught, uh, back to tile naught. So for now, when we click on start, yeah, you can see that we go to like circle. And now we are cross again, and yeah. And here you can see that we can play the game. Um, and we can reload the page pressing this button here. So this is it for the first video. Sorry for the long video and sorry for the bad explanation of some parts of it. But yeah, hopefully it was clear in some parts and could get some use of it. Well, anyway, I look forward to see you guys in the next video. So thank you guys for watching. See you guys soon. Bye.